Hello friends, my name is Steve and today in this, what is for me a very exciting Mr. Media tutorial. For you it might not be. Uh, this is going to be a Blender tutorial. This is going to be how to make some MoGraph style text animations inside of Blender uh, using the animation nodes add-on. So if you are one of my normal subscribers, probably don't watch this because this will have no color grading in it. But if you're someone who wants to learn about a very cool free program that is finally what I think, you know, a contender for using in real 3D stuff, you know, keep on watching. So I've used Cinema 4D for many years and I've just recently made the switch over because I've had some gigs come up. And I said, you know what? I don't really feel like paying to upgrade to the new version of Cinema 4D. And then I watched something about the new principled shader and I was like, well, shoot, Blender looks good now. So now that Blender looks good, I've started using it. And the first thing that I wanted to learn how to do was make MoGraph stuff happen, just like in Cinema 4D. So this is going to be how to do this. This is going to be kind of a slower tutorial because I'm not like a great Blender user yet. So one thing to know is I have my setup set up to use the left click as select, which is just over here. So I'm not going to go through every little thing, but I'll, I'll try to explain some stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some text. Hit Shift A to bring up your add menu. And then you go down to text. And now right away, you're like, hey, how do I edit this? Because, you know, there's not really any way to edit it. You have to go into edit mode by hitting tab. And now you can you know, make text, um, put something funny like sheep. Sheep are hilarious. And then we'll go back into object mode. And then we'll rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis. So hit R and then X and then 90. There we go. And now we will go ahead and extrude this a little bit. Give us some depth and we'll go ahead and make this centered aligned. And now that's most we're going to do. We're not going to make this too pretty. So now that we've got, you know, this happening, we're going to drag our timeline up and then back down to split it. And in here, we can hit shift F3 to go into our node editor and make sure that you have animation nodes installed. You just download it off their thing. There's many tutorials on how to get it Then you just Enable animation nodes. Then we'll make a new tree and we'll call this text animate. And now we're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing we're going to do is hit shift A and then we're going to go to our text section. And then we're going to go down to object separate. Drop this in here. Make sure that our object is selected and go ahead and I dropper that in there. Make sure this is kept on mesh. And then the next we're going to do is go to search, because I don't remember where this is, probably under the object menu, but drop in the object ID key node right there. And then you can take your object from here, drop it in there. Let's update this thing. So now you can see we have animation nodes, object, choose ID key, initial transforms. Excellent. Then we're going to go ahead and just drop our end in here. We're going to go to object and then matrix output. Drop this in here and we'll connect these up. So what is this little thing that we're doing here doing? Well, it's taking our text object and it's splitting it up into the different letters. So that's what's going on in here. And then it's getting the positions of the new letters and the positions and rotations actually of the new letters. It's coming out here. And now we're just popping them all into this object matrix output. So it doesn't look like we've done anything, but what's going on in here is we're able to manipulate all the different letters. So now that we can, let's start doing it. So what we're going to do is set up a group or a sub program or something else, just because it keeps it neat. You don't need to do it, but it sure makes stuff look a lot prettier whenever you use groups and sub programs. And you know, if you like doing this on your laptop in a Starbucks and a girl walks by, she's going to be like, oh shoot, you know how to use groups and animation nodes. And then you know, you're going to get married and it's going to be a white picket fence and everything's going to be great. She's going to be like a supermodel and her dad's also worth $10 billion and then you never have to work again and, and life is great. So use groups. Um, so sub programs. Yeah, drop a new group in here. So now get a new group input. We'll call this animate on. Then we'll also add an output node. So now... This is the start of our group and the end of our group. We have no, nothing coming in, nothing going out yet. So let's get some stuff coming in. So shift A, sub program, invoke sub program, animate on. 
And now this node is where we're going to feed data in and then get data out from. So let's add a new input to our group input right here. And since we're getting matrices from over here, we're going to want a matrix list because we're getting more than one matrix out of this. So we need a list of matrices because we need the S matrix and the H matrix and the E matrix and the E matrix and the P matrix and the exclamation part mark matrix. And now you can see up in our invoke sub program node, we get a little input there. So that's pretty exciting, I think. We can do the same sort of thing in our output because we're going to be outputting matrix lists as well. A matrix list. Matrix list, boom. And now you can see up here we get a little output. Drop that in there. Excellent. So now the way this signal is flowing is it's coming out of the text object. It's getting split. We're getting our matrices. They're going in this. And now it's coming out of here. And here's we're going to do all of our processing. So we'll go ahead and keep stuff a little bit more orderly. So we'll add a frame. And we'll go ahead and drop these guys in there, use right click to move stuff, which took me a long time to figure out. So now we've got this frame where we're going to do all of our processing. Excellent. So the next node we're going to add, we hit shift A, then we're going to go to matrix, offset matrix, drop this in here. And this is going to be sort of the big thing that does most of the stuff that we want it to do. So you see we connect these up, I'll zoom in some because we don't really need to worry about what's going on up here. This is pretty much done. So down in here, what we get to do is you can see we can select location. And now look at this. We can transform our text. Again, rotation. Whoa, look at that. So, we, so just go ahead and zero everything out. Now it's this fall off, which is really, you know, part of the exciting thing. And it's what makes this, you know, basically into new MoGraph. Except this looks much cooler than MoGraph, I think, using nodes and stuff. So we're going to go and get a falloff node, and we're going to get an object controller falloff. Drop this in here. Drop, connect these two. Change this to directional, and this would be the equivalent of a linear falloff, I think, or linear effector. I don't know. Something like that. And now, right now, we can't move it around because we need to add a new object for it to follow. So you're going to just do plane axis and we will rename this effector animate on and then we can just eyedropper that in there. And now you can see if we you know, do some translation stuff, nothing's happening yet, but I guess that's because our direction is set up wrong. So we probably need this to be on the X. Yeah, look at that. So now, excellent. So now you see they start, what will be off screen, and they come on. And then you can also add some rotation on the Z. So we'll make this, you know, 180. And now, zoop, look at that. This is pretty awesome. So we're going to change this from X to Y. We'll just do some something there for now. And so this is our basic, basic thing. And we're also going to make this scale up from zero. Zero, zero, zero. So, whoop, sheep. Excellent. Now we say that's great, but we want a little bit more flexibility. So what we will do is we will change this translation from just being you know manually put in inputs to another little object that we can drop around. So we'll go to object, object inputs transform, and this will get stuff from an object. So we'll plug our location into our translation. And we we'll hit shift A and we'll add another empty plane axis and we'll call this start target and we'll go ahead and move it you know back a little bit Ooh. and now if we select our effector again you can see nothing's happening because we haven't set this okay I drop it in there excellent so now it's going there but say we want it to move a little bit so coming from there whoa sweet so we're happy with that there, but we want it to scale from that point too. 
In order to make that happen, just go click on our offset matrix. And now over here, we have some hidden properties. So go advanced node settings. And I'll change this scale from local axis to include translation. And now they're all scaling out of that point. And now I'm not sure if it was super easy to do this in MoGraph. I mean, obviously nothing's super easy to do in animation nodes, but the fact that it's not significantly more difficult to make stuff like this happen is where some of the real powerful, where some of the real power of animation nodes comes in, which animation nodes is the first time I've been like really excited about a piece of software in a while. So let's not make a tutorial on it and why nobody's watching this. So I can do whatever I want. I can pull a PewDiePie and say some terrible stuff. Uh, do, 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 but I won't do that because I know at least one of you out there is just watching it for the love. And for that, I, I appreciate you. All right, so now this is cool, but it doesn't like look great yet because we just have this linear fall off. It's coming on and stopping, and that looks pretty, you know, like a PowerPoint animation. So we'll make it look more like, you know, take it from a $100 animation to, you know, $800 animation. And we'll do that by changing our fall off. So what we will do is we will move some nodes around a little bit, give us a little more space, drop this guy down, hit Shift A. And we'll go to fall off, interpolate fall off. Just drop this in here. And now we could just change this here and you can see like back's going to be pretty good. We already get, well actually change this so it ends. You know, that's already much better. But if we want a little bit more control and we want to impress the ladies a little bit more, what we can do is you can hit shift A, go to interpolation, hit construct. And here we can use that same back and make it this way. And in order to see what you're doing, it's really handy. You can hit Control A to search. And you can type in Interpolation Viewer. And you just drop this here. And you can see exactly what this is doing. Connect this up. So you can see this will make it sort of go a whoop at the end. It's just kind of backwards just because the way we're animating it. So just read it from left to right in this case or right to left. Don't like some languages do that? I don't know. But you can see, now we're getting that. But we want it to be a little bit more springy. So what we can do is you can hit Shift A, go to Interpolation Mix, drop a mix in here, we'll change. Woo, stuff is getting a little messy. Let's clean it up. Drop this over here. So in the first one, hit Shift D to duplicate. Put another one. And we'll change this one to something like elastic which will be a sort of you know springy forward and back movement then you can see as we change our factor once again reading from right to left you'll see it'll come up and then back and up and back yeah, that's kind of a lot so we'll bring our balances down to like two but you can see this is going way too far so we just bring our factor down until it's just a little bit I'm just adding in that little bit of extra bounce we want a little bit more back in there. That's looking pretty good. Whoa. So now that's a really fun animation going on. So just that, you know, I mean, not easy, but you can see if you get a few of these, you know, made and saved, you can make a lot of stuff happen. And if you make it in a group like this, let's say you want to make an animate off also, what you can do is just hit Shift D, get another one of these, whoop. Just hit Shift D, get another one of these in here. Hit Shift A, subprograms, group, create a new group, new output, name this animate off, select all this, hit Shift D, bring it over here, delete that node and that node, drop these nodes in here. Add a matrix list input, drop this in here, and add a matrix list output, drop that in there, change this from animate on to animate off, shift A, new empty, plane axis, animate off, do this guy too. Animate off. Let's say we probably don't need an elastic thing. Let's do Let's 
something like exponential. Whoop. Drop that in there. Change our translation to you know something on the x axis. Let's make sure this is actually chosen. Animate off. Reconnect some stuff. Excellent. And now we can animate off also. Let's change the scale back. Oh, not zero. Theo, one. Excellent. Then you can. Whoop. Is this guy too? Animate it back off. Look at that. So that is how to get some MoGraph style text effects inside of Blender 2.79. This whole thing is completely free. I know for animations with a similar workflow to this, you know, obviously you make them pretty and, and nicer than this, but you can charge, you know, several hundred dollars for, you know, what amounts to one or one and a half hours of work total. So, you know, if you're a kid in school and also you can do these things over the internet. So like in high school is when I got started doing motion graphics. So no one knew that I was like, you know, a 16 year old kid making motion graphics. So, and like for my first job interview uh, in, in the video world, the guy asked me, how do you have so much experience whenever you're, you're just a kid? I was like, I went on creativecow.com on the job section and just got, got motion graphics jobs. So, you know, for you old fogies out there just want to learn color grading that already are, are gone, you know, this isn't for you. But for you young whippersnappers out there, I'm telling you, motion graphics is a good way to get started in the industry because it's something that is like, it's not the easiest thing in the world to learn, but boy, is there a demand for it. If you want to meet agencies, learn motion graphics. If you want to meet directors, learn invisible effects. And then... You know, you can buy buy fun toys and then you can make yourself into a DP or colorist or whatever, you know, the more sought after jobs are. But motion graphics is great. Blender is great. 2.79 is finally, um, I think it looks awesome. It's got some great stuff. I've been doing one a days on my Instagram as I've been learning it. So I've only got, you know, I think I've got like 12 days of Blender time down. So it's not that hard to learn. I've learned... It really sucks at the beginning because UI is terrible, but a lot of the things they do like really do kind of make sense whenever you just power through. So like some of these are pretty ugly, but you know, I've just been sort of learning the software. It's got really good particles. So you can see like progressing, getting, starting with some pretty terrible stuff. That's actually good. But you know, progressing to something, you know, getting better at the software. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, for the two of you that remain, thanks for remaining. I'm glad I got my one a week tutorial quota, even if this is going to get like maybe 50 views uh, at the most. Um, super thanks to Jacquees. I feel like calling this Luke is wrong. You know, go over and be like, hey, thanks for making great stuff. Theo says hello. Um, this This is really something that drastically, drastically increases blender's functionality so this and then just knowing a little bit about lighting and rendering i'm telling you man you can make some good stuff so i left the rambling till the end man goodness 20 minutes i mean that's kind of a long time but also i thought it was going to be longer than that because like i said you can sell this animation for a pretty decent profit give it a little bit more time to get refined put some nicer text in there light it up put some camera work in there and you'll be good to go so, anyway, once again, I've been Theo with Mr. Media. We have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.